Hello everyone, I am Casey the Gamer, and it's time for another game review. Mega Man X is back for another battle against the Mavericks in Mega Man X6 for the PlayStation. Mega Man X6 was released in Japan on November 29th, 2001, and on December 4th, 2001 in North America. In Japan, it released just under a year from Mega Man X5, and there was only 10 months between the American releases of X5 and X6. A very quick turnaround. Now granted, the yearly releases aren't a new thing, they did happen with the Super Nintendo games as well, but the Super Nintendo games are of a much higher quality than this one. As stated in the Mega Man X5 review, Mega Man X5 was originally supposed to be the finale of the X series. Mega Man X6 was made very fast and without the knowledge of longtime series producer Keiji Inafune, who was preparing to start the Mega Man Zero series. Mega Man X6 being made caused some issues for the story Inafune wanted to tell in the Mega Man Zero franchise. So I remember getting Mega Man X6 for Christmas in 2001, and I was so excited to pop this bad boy into the PlayStation. I had a great time with it back then. I really loved it, and I do still have a soft spot for it. There's tons of things that I really do like in this game but there are things that I don't like as well. So let's take a closer look at Mega Man X6 and see what it's all about, the good and the bad. There are spoilers ahead for the story of the game, and we get a retcon right at the start. Mega Man X6 takes place only three weeks after the events of X5, despite the ending of X5 jumping forward three years. But anyway, three weeks after the events of X5, a reploid named Gate finds a piece of debris in the area. Gate suddenly seems like he might know what the debris actually is. One week later, Gate is laughing maniacally with a glowing red aura. He plans to bring all low-level Reploids into submission and build an ideal world for only Reploids, where he controls everything. X is dreaming that he hears Zero speaking to him. Zero is telling X to wake up and that he is the only one left to fight. Suddenly, X wakes up to Alia telling him about a giant maverick attacking somewhere. X rushes to the scene and fights his way through the mavericks there. X finally finds the giant maverick and manages to defeat it. Suddenly, Zero, now sporting a purple and pinkish color scheme, appears and slashes the defeated maverick, destroying it for good. Zero then teleports away. Another Reploid named Hymax appears and claims that he knew Zero was behind this. Hymax explains that he is investigating the Zero Nightmare. X asks what Hymax is talking about, and Hymax ends up thinking X is involved, and the two have a brief battle. X is completely outmatched, unable to damage Hymax at all. Hymax says that X was unimpressive and to stay out of it while he takes care of the Zero Nightmare. Hymax leaves, and X wonders what is happening. A Reploid named Isaac is giving a speech about the chaotic and disturbing times, saying that the Nightmare is upon them. The Nightmare makes Reploids confused, and they may malfunction or delete themselves. 
Due to the space colony incident from X5, there are few reploids and humans left. Isaac says they have sent investigators to the eight suspected areas to hopefully uncover the mystery of the nightmare. The pattern. It continues. Isaac claims that the nightmare is caused by a ghost of Zero. X begins to get upset, and Alia tells X to let Isaac finish. Isaac asks for volunteers to join them and help their cause by working with the investigators to destroy the nightmare and Zero's ghost. Hymax will lead the mission. X is upset about how Isaac talked about Zero. Alia tells X that they also saw the nightmare shaped as Zero, and they'll have to investigate as well. X is curious about the suspected areas Isaac mentioned, and is suspicious about the investigators. Cygnus talks about how the mission is risky, but they have to destroy the nightmare to minimize damage. He then commands X to return to base. They now have the locations of all of the suspected areas, and X heads to the first one and runs into the Zero Nightmare. X manages to defeat him, and then the real Zero returns. Zero talks about how his reputation has been damaged while he was away. X is incredibly happy to see that his friend is okay. X says that he searched for Zero's parts, but he couldn't find him. Zero explains that he had to hide himself while he repaired himself. Zero then says it's time for X and him to go and destroy the nightmare together. A quick side note about Zero's return. He says that he repaired himself, but he actually has no idea how he returned. Zero even asks Dr. Light if you find an armor capsule as Zero, if Dr. Light was the one who repaired him. But Dr. Light says no, so there's no real answer. It's a mystery. Anyway, X and Zero return to base, and Cygnus asks Zero if he will join them, and Zero says of course, it's his job. X returns to the first area and encounters the investigator there who seems to have gone maverick. X defeats him and returns to base. Gate and Isaac then talk about the first investigator being defeated by X. Gate tells Isaac to keep an eye on X and then asks how the experiment is going. Isaac says that everything is going great and the effect is brilliant. Isaac tells Gate that if they had used Hymax, their plan would go much quicker because X was no match for him but Gate says no and to continue things as they are for now. Gate wonders if Isaac has found what he's looking for. Isaac says that he has and that this other Reploid wouldn't die in such a trivial battle. He's as persistent as X. Gate says there are plenty of options and that Isaac is on his own. He doesn't need the body of Zero. Isaac is told to just do the work and keep an eye on X. X continues investigating the areas and battling the Maverick investigators. X defeats three more investigators and then has a rematch with Hymax. X manages to defeat Hymax this time to the surprise of Hymax himself and Isaac. Gate congratulates X and gives the typical villain speech where he explains his plan and then he invites X to his lab. Going to Gate's lab is the final batch of stages in the game. So after you defeat the Zero Nightmare, you can encounter Hymax in any of the stages in the game if you find the secret alternate areas. And once you defeat Hymax, it opens up the final stages even if you haven't beaten all eight Maverick stages. Anyway, before heading to Gate's lab, X defeats the remaining four Mavericks while collecting upgrades and saving injured Reploids. X heads to Gate's lab and makes his way through while battling tons of Mavericks. At the end of the first area, X encounters a boss called the Nightmare Mother. X defeats it and has another conversation with Gate. Gate is pleased with the progress the Maverick Hunters have made 
and commends Alia on her good work. Alia and Gate used to be friends or colleagues or whatever back in the day. The conversation continues for a bit, and Gate says that he didn't get here on his abilities alone. Gate shows the piece of debris that he found at the start of the game. He thought it was nothing but junk at first, but it turns out to be a piece of Zero, allowing Gate to obtain Zero's DNA. Gate used it to create Hymax and the Nightmare. X says he's going to teach Gate a lesson, and Gate tells him to bring it on. X makes his way through the next part of Gate's lab and has yet another battle with Hymax. X defeats Hymax again, completely destroying him this time. After proceeding further, X finally comes face to face with Gate for their battle. X manages to defeat Gate, and Gate can't accept that he lost. Gate claims that this isn't the end. Gate says he prepared for this and has resurrected Sigma once again. Sigma says that he did not die and that he didn't need Gate's help at all. Sigma launches an attack at Gate and blasts him and Gate screams in agony. Sigma then tells X that he's waiting for him. X notices Isaac's body. It looks like an empty husk now. No time to worry about that. X takes off after Sigma. Before the battle with Sigma, X must once again battle all of the bosses. Again. Once they're defeated, X finds Sigma, who doesn't appear to be in the best shape. X claims that Sigma isn't complete and that he'll defeat him once and for all. X makes very short work of this form of Sigma, but in true Sigma fashion, he always comes prepared with a second form. Another giant form that seems even more unhinged than before. X manages to defeat this form of Sigma as well. As he's dying, Sigma claims that he will once again return someday, because why wouldn't he? X and Zero are outside with Gate's body. Zero says that it's over and asks what X will do with Gate's body because he is damaged beyond repair. X says that it's up to Alia. Cygnus, Alia, and Douglas show up on the scene and talk about rebuilding the world and making it a better place. Alia wants to create a program that will be free of corruption and all viruses. The credits roll and they end on a shot of Gate and Alia from when they were colleagues. X does have an alternate ending that plays out pretty much the same. If you never find the Zero Nightmare and defeat it, Zero never comes back into the story, with the exception of the very end. It shows Zero watching X and the others, and he decides to leave things to them for the time being. Once you defeat the Zero Nightmare, Zero is playable and he gets his own ending and some different cutscenes as well. So defeat the Zero Nightmare, get the return of Zero cutscene, and we're off. Zero defeats the first investigator, and then there's the scene with Gate and Isaac talking about their plans, but it's a little bit different this time. Isaac talks about how outstanding Zero's performance is and believes that he will cause problems. Gate says that he isn't interested in Zero and claims that Hymax will defeat him before too long. Gate says Isaac is obsessed with Zero and tells him to forget about him and focus on the experiment. Zero defeats four more investigators before having a battle with Hymax. After a hard-fought battle, Zero comes out on top. Isaac is incredibly pleased with the results of the fight. It causes him to laugh a lot, and Zero wants to know what's so funny. Isaac can't stop laughing, saying that X was no match for Hymax, but Zero had no problem. Zero still doesn't understand, but says that he's going to defeat Isaac now as well. Zero jumps at Isaac to attack him, but Isaac stuns Zero, making it to where he can't move. Isaac says that he knows Zero inside out and that he can capture him whenever he wants. But first, 
he's going to take Hymax back to base. Isaac takes his leave, and Cygnus and Alia ask Zero if he's okay. It seems like the stasis field has a time release on it, so they have no choice but to wait. Back at the base, Gate talks to Alia and Zero, and talks about his plans, and then he invites Zero to his lab. Zero tells Gate that his plans will never succeed. Before going to the lab, Zero goes and defeats the remaining Mavericks. Zero then makes his way through Gate's lab and defeats the Nightmare Mother. Gate reveals that he used Zero's DNA to make Hymax and the Nightmare. Zero is pissed and he tells Gate to delete the Nightmare as it will be Gate's undoing. Zero claims that he is going to destroy Gate's evil ambition. Zero makes his way further in and defeats Hymax again. After that, Zero encounters Gate and manages to defeat him as well. Gate reveals that he brought back Sigma, and Sigma says that he didn't die and attacks Gate. Zero says that he knew Sigma would return, but it's time to end this. Zero goes to leave when he notices Isaac's empty body. As Zero looks at Isaac, he hears a voice in his head telling him to go, and that he is the strongest robot. Zero then goes after Sigma. Zero battles all of the bosses again, and makes it to the barely completed Sigma. The two battle, and Zero easily destroys this form of Sigma. Zero then battles Sigma's second form, and defeats it as well after a crazy fight. As usual, Sigma says that he will one day return. Zero's ending shows him talking to a scientist about being sealed away so he can be scanned and make sure that the virus in him is gone and no longer a threat. Zero is told that it will take about 102 years if everything goes smoothly. The scientist asks what if Zero is needed. Zero says they already have a much better hunter. X. One little tidbit regarding Isaac. It is widely believed that like Sergius in Mega Man X2, Isaac is another robot body that Dr. Wily is inhabiting. The evidence includes his obsession with Zero and his hatred for X, also claiming to know Zero inside out and being incredibly happy when Zero defeats Hymax. Also, Isaac is voiced by Dr. Wily's Japanese voice actor from Mega Man 8, Mega Man X4, and some of the other games. It's not confirmed, but it's a theory that I definitely buy into. And that's the story for X6. I think Zero's ending was supposed to try and tie it to the Zero series because they kind of messed up the story for that, bringing Zero back in this game. Zero was supposed to die in X5, like what happens in every scenario in that game, and then get resurrected somehow in the Zero series. But here he gets sealed away for a hundred years, which is when the Zero series takes place, a hundred years after the X series, give or take. In addition to that, X6 is riddled with terrible grammar and awkward lines due to its incredibly poor translation. Like Zero's I hid myself while I repaired myself, or the what makes you laugh while talking to Isaac, there's a lot more for sure, and I guess the only time where it kind of works is for Sigma, because he was incomplete. A lot of his dialogue during both phases of his fight is very out there. This is easily the worst translation of any of the X games. Now for the gameplay. In case you skipped the story section and went right to the gameplay, and you've never played this before, spoiler alert, you unlock Zero as a playable character after beating the Zero Nightmare. Mega Man X6 plays like the previous games. You run, dash, jump, shoot, or slash your way through the stages while you battle Mavericks and the Nightmare Virus. X plays like he always does where he is the more ranged character with his X-Buster. 
but this time he does come equipped with Zero Z Saber that X had in his good ending from X5. Just a single slow slash though, not nearly as good as what Zero can do with it, but that's fine. Zero also plays like he does in X4 and X5, except in X6, Zero has the air dash and the double jump right from the start. Zero also has some new animations in this game, and they are smooth. His double jump looks awesome, and his new three-hit saber combo is gorgeous. Zero also comes equipped with his Z-Buster, and kind of like X isn't great with the Z-Saber in this game, Zero isn't so great with the Z-Buster. Like an X5, Zero can't move while using it, and he can't charge it up. It is better in X6 though than it was in X5. It fires faster and it does better damage. As with the previous games, there are eight heart tanks located in the stages to increase your maximum health. And like in the last two, there are two energy tanks to refill your health, a weapon energy tank to refill weapon energy, and the EX tank, which gives you four lives to start with. And what Mega Man X game is complete without the armor upgrades? Like in X5, X gets two brand new armors in this game, the Blade Armor and the Shadow Armor. I think they're both pretty cool in terms of gameplay and their designs are fantastic. Sadly, like in Mega Man X5, you have to get all four parts of the armor in order to use it. The leg upgrade for the blade armor is found in Commander Yamark's stage, and it allows X to do a mock dash. It's a chargeable air dash that makes X temporarily invincible, and it allows him to go further than a regular air dash. You can dash up, down, left, or right. It's very useful for getting certain upgrades. The body upgrade is located in Shield Sheldon stage, and it reduces the damage you take and gives you the Giga attack. The attack is a wave of energy fired from the Z Saber. It looks really damn cool, and it does some decent damage. The arm cannon upgrade is found in Infinity Maginian stage, and it gives you the plasma shot, which can deal repeated damage when it hits an enemy. It also grants you a charged saber slash when you hold up on the D-pad when you release the charge shot. The head upgrade is found in Ground Scaravich's stage, and it makes special weapons consume less ammo. Overall, I really enjoy the blade armor. It's one of my favorites to come out of the PlayStation era. The leg upgrade for the Shadow Armor is found in Blizzard Wolffang stage, and it allows X to stick on walls and the ceiling and walk on spikes. The body upgrade is found in Rainy Turtleoid stage, and it reduces the damage you take and gives you the Giga Attack. The Giga Attack launches energy rings that spin around you, and they can hit enemies multiple times. It's another great move. The Arm Cannon upgrade is located in Blaze Heatnix's stage, and it gives X a Shuriken shot, and the Charge Shot is a powerful Saber Slash. The Head upgrade is located in Metal Shark Player's stage, and allows X to swing the Z Saber faster than other armors. This armor, like the Gaia armor in X5, can't use special weapons, but it's another great design and I love it. Speaking of armors, X will start the game with the Falcon armor from X5. It's just been nerfed. It can't fly anymore because it was damaged and its charge shot no longer goes through walls or enemies. Other than that, it works like it did in the last game. The ultimate armor is available as well with a cheat code. No way to get it legit in the game this time. But X6 cheats, so it's totally fair to use the ultimate armor. It functions like it has in the last two games. Big powerful charge shot and unlimited Nova Strike ability. And it features a new black color scheme that looks fantastic. 
Zero's black armor is also available with a cheat code, and it functions like it does in X5 pretty much. It reduces damage, destroys projectiles, and zero slashes will do more damage per swing. In X5, the Z Saber with the black armor could destroy the Sigma and zero viruses, but they're not in this game, so it doesn't have that ability. I do have to wonder if the ultimate armor and Zero's black armor were originally going to be available legitimately in the game, but they just ran out of time? I don't know. Only thinking about that because they do change X and Zero's portraits when using those armors. Although when you do beat the game, it does tell you what the cheat codes are, so maybe not. I don't know. I'm not really going to spend a lot of time talking about Zero's moves in the game, or X's, but there are some really cool ones. A lot of Zero's are kind of like what you've seen from him before. That doesn't mean they're bad, he does have some really good ones. This one probably has my favorite version of his Giga attack. X also gets a version of it as well, although he has to charge the move up to get the same effect. Zero also has a really cool spin slash, an upward fire slash that I really like. I also love X's fire attack in this game. It's a really cool fire slash. Metal Anchor from Metal Shark Player for X is really cool. Like the basic attack throws out an anchor, but the charged up version sends out several metal copies of Storm Eagle from Mega Man X1 flying at an enemy. There's some other old Maverick cameos in the boss fight with Metal Shark Player, which I really like. Zero's move from Shark Player is also really cool. He does a downward thrusting move with a giant sword that also produces an anchor when it hits the ground. As for the stages, you've got the intro stage, the eight Maverick stages, the two gate lab stages, and the final Sigma stage. Each Maverick stage also has a hidden teleporter that takes you to an alternate version of the stage where you can fight other bosses like the Zero Nightmare, Hymax, and even Dynamo from X5. There's also certain upgrades you can only find in these alternate stages. Anyway, the standard boss weakness order is Commander Yamark, Ground Scaravich, Blaze Heatniks, Blizzard Wolffang, Rainy Turtleoid, Metal Shark Player, Shield Sheldon, and Infinity Maginian. Obviously you can go in whatever order you want, and I didn't do the standard order either. I started to, but then I kinda hopped around to snag various upgrades to make things easier. In the alternate stages, you'll run into the Zero Nightmare as the first boss, and he is weak to the Z Saber. Once you beat him, Zero is unlocked. The next boss to appear in the alternate stages is Hymax. Hymax is weak to the fire moves from X and Zero. However, the way you fight him is different for each character. With X, you have to stun Hymax with the X Buster first, and then hit him with the move. With Zero, you have to hit Hymax with the fire attack first to stun him, and then hit him with the Z Saber. And when you defeat Hymax, regardless of how many Mavericks you have beaten, you are given access to the final stages of the game. With Hymax gone, Dynamo will now appear in the alternate stages as a boss. Dynamo is weak to Meteor Rain from X and the Spin Slash from Zero. Fighting Dynamo is a good way to farm Nightmare Souls. Each boss drops a big one and some enemies will drop smaller ones. More Nightmare Souls will increase your rank, which allows you to equip more parts. After all of the Mavericks are dealt with, you have to deal with the final stages of the game and fight the Nightmare Mother, who is weak to Metal Anchor and Zero's move from Metal Shark Player. But good luck hitting them with that one without getting hurt. It's definitely easier with X for me, but this boss just sucks regardless of who you fight it with. After that, there's a rematch with Hymax, and he is weak to the same stuff as earlier. Then you fight Gate, 
who is weak to the projectiles that spawn when you destroy his energy balls. I really dislike this fight too. It's just so boring waiting for him to do something. Then you have to fight all of the Mavericks again, and they're all weak to the same stuff that they were weak to before. Sigma is up next, and Phase 1 is weak to Metal Anchor for X, and the equivalent move for Zero. Phase 2 is weak to Ground Dash, and Magma Blade for X, and it's weak to the Spin Slash, and a Diving Saber Attack for Zero. This phase can be a huge pain in the ass, because he does high damage, and you can't always damage him back. Thankfully, some of the things he summons will drop energy, so that makes things a little bit more bearable. But with Sigma defeated again, you have beaten the game. So I didn't mention this in the X5 review, because they didn't really do much in that game. In X5 and X6, there are injured Reploids for you to rescue in the stages. In X5, they would give you more lives and refill your health. In X6, they do both of those things, but some of them give you parts or extra heart tanks to increase your health bar further. Same goes for the weapon energy. Some of the parts include stuff like the Hyper Dash, the Ultimate Buster, the Saber Extend, or the Shot Eraser. Some really cool and useful stuff. Definitely go out of your way to rescue the injured Reploids in the game, even if you have to die to do it because your lives in the game don't really mean that much because X6 has a pretty generous checkpoint system. The worst thing in X6 when it comes to the injured Reploids are the nightmare virus enemies in the stage. If you can't get to a Reploid before they do, the virus will transform the Reploid into a Maverick and you won't be able to get the potential part that they had, unless you reload your save. So you definitely gotta watch out for that. Another thing with the nightmare stuff in this game is that it has a different effect on the stages. Like the game tells you that if a stage is red, that it will have a nightmare effect active. Which that's just straight up not true. Some stages will still have a nightmare effect regardless. Maybe that's also just a side effect from the nightmare? It means that Alia doesn't know shit about the conditions of the stage? Some of the nightmare effects in the stages include falling fireballs, icy floors, wind, random rocks, and my least favorite, the darkness. It covers good chunks of the screen, making it hard to deal with the stage because you can't see anything. Even without the nightmare effects, some of the stages can be a giant pain. Some of them are just fine, but on some there's tons of spikes bottomless pits, and a lot of waiting to move forward. There's just so many things where you can die super easy or take a ton of damage. If it weren't for the checkpoints, this game would be much worse. This game is also a pain in the ass for getting one of the armor capsules, the one in ground Scaravich's stage. It's completely random if you get teleported to the room that it's in. It's not the biggest deal if you've already beaten the stage and can exit when you want, but it is a little tedious. It's definitely not a big deal if you're playing as Zero and you don't care about the armor parts. This game did fix one of the things I hated about X5 though. Alia constantly interrupting you. She might say something at the start of a stage, but then anything after that you can ignore. But if you want to listen to it, you just have to push a button. So that's nice. It doesn't break up the flow of gameplay like the last game did. I've always been nostalgic for this game like the other X games, but the last few times I've played it, I found myself enjoying it less than I did back in the day. It still does some really cool stuff, but it gets brought down by a lot of the bullshit. The graphics for this game are absolutely fantastic. Just like X4 and X5, X and Zero and all of the characters look amazing. The sprite work is flawless. While some of the stages can be a huge pain in the ass, they are pretty cool looking, and graphically they are top notch. 
This game also has some pretty cool boss designs. I like Hymax and Gate, even though I hate his boss fight. I love Blizzard Wolf Fang, Metal Shark Player, Rainy Turtleoid, Blaze Heatnix, and both of Sigma's designs. They're all great. The sound effects in X6 are fantastic, just like they were in X4 and X5. No complaints at all. Everything sounds good. And some more legitimately good things for Mega Man X6 come in the form of its soundtrack. I absolutely adore pretty much all of the songs in this game. My favorites being The Answer, which was used for the intro sequence, the opening stage theme, Blizzard Wolfang's theme, Blaze Heatnik's theme, Metal Shark Player's theme, Rainy Turtleoid's theme, Sigma's second form theme, Zero's theme, and the ending theme. There's a lot of good in here. This game also has Japanese voice acting, and I think they all sound pretty good. Definitely miles ahead of the meme-worthy English cast of X4. And that is Mega Man X6. I still look back on my time with this game fondly, even if I do find it more annoying the more I play it. It still has some really cool things in there. I love Zero's new animations in this game. They are so good. The story's kind of whatever, and it doesn't really impact much except for bringing Zero back. I would have really loved to have seen how things would have gone if X5 was indeed the finale as it was originally intended. But oh well. Overall, X6 is alright, but it's easily the worst of the PlayStation trilogy. If you've enjoyed the other X games to this point, and you want more, I say give it a shot. Just go in knowing that it's going to be a rough time. And sadly, the worst has yet to come. Next up for the Mega Man X franchise is Mega Man X7. And I'm really, really not looking forward to that. Thank you all so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And if you want to see more of me, you can catch me streaming all kinds of stuff over on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash caseythegamer91. And I also have a Patreon where you can get perks like early video access and some other cool stuff. And that is patreon.com slash caseythegamer91. You can find both of those links and all of my other links in the description below. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I hope to catch you next time. Peace out.